I got so attached when I was interviewing all these people. We interviewed so many people who are 100 plus because we wanted to uh, interview the victims of uh, Direct Action Day, uh, the genocide which happened in 46. Besides that, I interviewed lots of intellectuals, lots of creative people, so many political activists and everybody. One common thread is, two common threads. Number one, that everybody is leaving Bengal, nobody wants to live here. That's one thing. And second thing is that in 75, 80 years now almost after independence, the violence has never stopped. We say the word violence, but because I have researched so much, it's not violence, it's a politically organized violence which very often 8 out of 10 times is communal violence. But this is all funded, organized, managed by political parties. <music> Bengal has always been highly dominated by one single party, uh, even pre-independence time. Muslim League used to rule it. So what happened when, they, when the India was not getting partitioned or divided, when the Britain was not agreeing to it, to put pressure. And that time Congress was called Hindu Congress and this was Muslim League. So there was a very clear cut divided line that Congress represents the interests of Hindus and Muslim League of Muslims which is not true because Gandhi and everybody, Ambedkar, everybody worked towards a more secular idea of India. Now to beat that, to dominate and to prove that okay Calcutta belongs Bengal to uh, Pakistan, they call for direct action day which meant that just go and kill all Hindus from there. This is a historical fact, chai wo leftist ne likha ho, chai rightist ne likha ho, centrist ne likha ho, historian ne likha, ye undisputed fact hai. Some 20 or 20,000 people were killed and in highest proportion Hindu people, which also establishes that Muslim League was ruling at that time and despite being uh, not as big as Hindu Congress, they could defeat them. How did they achieve this? They achieved it by employing the mafia, the underworld. Calcutta had a big underworld at that time. Calcutta was the only place they had cabaret and uh, gambling and alcohol and all these soldiers from Second World War had American soldiers after fighting with Jap Japan. They had all come and they stayed back in uh, Calcutta. So they were selling their arms and guns in exchange of alcohol, money or women. Since then this under, so when the, when the, when direct action day riot started the massacre, initially it was controlled by politicians. They were instructing all the mafia, but after two days mafia took over and they started running it the way they wanted it. And that's the first time they realized their power, this mafia. And since then, this entire bunch when India found, got independence, it's not that these people went to Pakistan, they remained in Calcutta. So these people then were all transported to communists. When communists lost the uh, power, they all got shifted to Congress. When Congress lost power, they got shifted to the current government. So Bengal politics has always, this mafia has been a very integral part of that. In fact, that is the machine of uh, Bengal politics. If you remember in 80s when the mafia was very strong in Bombay, you remember all politicians used to listen to them, Bollywood used to listen to them. So that is the situation. So now what has happened, parties have realized it and what they do is, they employ these mafia into their parties, you know, and then they do land grabbing, uh, demography change, conversions, I don't know at what extent it happened, but all sexual exploitation of women is primarily done by these people, you know. And so, the party headquarters, party offices in the district, mein, tahsil mein, wo sare have become dense of this, we saw in Sandesh Kali. When this thing happened in uh, Calcutta recently, that RG Kaur uh, Medical College uh, incident, Initially, I did not react, uh, react means I did not, I thought that okay, government will do something immediately, but then her parents were given wrong information that she has committed suicide, then FIR was uh, written one day later, uh, when, the, when the principal was promoted after that and finally, I think the last nail for me was 
uh, when the chief minister took out the protest against her own government. That is a very hopeless situation for a citizen. And my film Delhi Files is about what is citizens role in this country and what state owes to the citizens. It is a very, very hard hitting bold film. If the Kashmir file disturbed you, this is going to destroy you. So, I am so emotionally involved in this and that is why I went there. So, on that day Saurabh Ganguly was protesting, I was protesting, lots of actors, actresses also joined me. So, I just went ad hoc, I mean impromptu without thinking on a very impulsive thing. And I just reached there and issued a video and then you saw that thousands and thousands of people came there protesting. So, that is why I went there. I think as far as women issue is concerned, there are I think it is multi layered. Uh, Let us start from the basics, where, where this insecurity and this feeling of that I am not safe begins. Okay. You and I are privileged people, you I am sure you have a big corporate office, my office has places, but you, you begin with an average woman of India. Okay, if she takes a local train and she needs to go to the um, uh, washroom, okay, imagine her situation. They are generally for ladies toilet is the beginning, it begins from there. Now, look at the film industry, okay, I do not know about Calcutta but I know about uh, Hindi film industry and I started my career 30 years ago, uh, I think in 90s uh, sometime. Uh, since then, I have not seen a dramatic 360 degree turn into uh, hygiene for women, uh, isolated uh, toilets for them or security around and outside toilets for them. We do night shifts, okay, somebody says, Maha chale jao, aap chal ke ja rahe ho, akele kahin pe, uh, a uh, makeshift hai. If she is alone, uh, three, four log aajayen, to kaun, kaise, kya hoga? Nobody thinks about these things. I think it is not part of the consciousness of this country. It is not that ye galat hai, wo galat hai, aise to aap pinpoint karoge, to you will reach nowhere. But I think it is a matter of general consciousness. Uh, people have seen that uh, when it comes to justice to women, okay, uh, we have failed as a country. There are thousands and tens of thousands of cases of rape, sexual exploitation where the culprits uh, go scot free in lack of evidence and all that. Because see everything depends on prima facie reporting, police investigation, everything depends on that. And police and the politicians, they are in a nexus. Now, politicians always think in terms of vote banks. So, when something happens to a woman, first thing, what is the first thing in India do, uh, in people do? They try to cover it. Idiots say kind of things, but even educated, first thing politicians do is they want to shrug the responsibility. Because if she is OBC, okay, then you have a problem there. If uh, uh, she is SC, ST, minority, poor, so there are thousands of considerations for vote banks. And women issues are so sensitive in politics that governments can fall overnight. We have seen in 2011 to 14 what happened to Congress. And therefore, everybody tries to cover it up in some way or the other. Whether it happened in UP or Unnao or Hathras or Kathua or recently Badlapur or Hyderabad, these are famous cases. That, that boy Prajwal Ramanna, what is his name? What happened? Chardin sensation hua. Phir sab bhool gaye. Kisi ko yaad bhi nahi hai. Kiska beta hai? Wo batao. Uska lineage dekho. Usse kuch nahi hone wala hai. To aapne dekha hoga India mein kabhi powerful logon ko wo hamesha bach jate hai. Aur garib logon ke against kuch milta hilta nahi to cases nahi hote. Women in, there is not even one woman I have met or you have met or anybody has met who feels ki haan, mein ja rahi hu, mein to bilkul safe hu. Ya ghar se nikalne ke pehle do baar sochti na ho. Or reason kya hai? Abhi bhi middle class, kai urban log sunenge, unko yakin nahi aega is baat pe, but anybody who comes from a middle class Indian background will understand this. Outside the metropolitans, abhi bhi ladki jaise hi badi hoti hai, tera saal puberty cross karti hai, usse kehne lagte hai, chunni pehno, chunni jo pehnte na, wo, wo pehno, wo pehnti to boya bolenge, kandhe thode, aise karke chalo, aise mat chalo. Aap dekhi, isi liye pure India mein ladkiyan, average ladkiyan, who come from modest backgrounds and small towns generally have droopy shoulders. Aap jasi Europe jate ho, first culture shock you find is they are walking straight. That says a lot about the country. The body language of women is always like that. 
they are always isolated from mainstream and in uh, calcutta everybody every single girl was saying if we are not safe in a hospital doing a government duty then where are we safe